Our reading is from uh, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 13. That's page 1172 in the Bibles in the pews. Galatians 5, starting at verse 13. Now, boys and girls, uh, Dan has asked uh, if you, as I read, whether you could look out for some words in the passage that I'll read. The words are these. Spirit, fruit, sow, harvest and reap. That's spirit, fruit, sow, harvest and reap. So as I read uh, this passage, look out for those words, and I'm sure that will be clear when Dan speaks. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. And then moving down to chapter 6, verse (coughs) 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Well, children, I saw some great listening going on because I saw some people count on their fingers. So well done. I think you probably got more than 10 times that you heard spirit or fruit or sow or reap or harvest. So great job. Let me do a quick adjustment and we'll get going. There we go. That's better. Okay, now, children, you've already realised, haven't you, that it's harvest today, grown-ups too. We are celebrating today all the good things that God gives us and we're celebrating the way that he works in the world. And we know one way he works in the world is by teaching us from the Bible. So we're just going to pray now and ask for his help. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the way you teach us is through your word, the Bible. You do that by your spirit. We pray you teach us all today, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, children and grown-ups, we are going to keep thinking about harvest and how God works in his world today. We're going to see three things today. We're going to see a sowing principle, a sowing problem and then how we do some sowing in practice. We're going to think about sowing, sowing, sowing today. We saw all the things we're going to see will be in the second reading that we had. Let me get out for us. Here we are. And we're going to think about those verses together. But before we do that, we just need to go back a little bit in Galatians. So children, the bit of the Bible we read is in a letter in the Bible called Galatians. We've jumped in at chapter 5 and 6. We need to go back 
to make sure we've understood some of the things that Paul, who wrote the letter, wants us to know. We're thinking about what it means to be a Christian, to be part of God's forever family, and we need to do that before we think about sowing. Now, children, here's the first thing we've got to see about being a Christian, becoming part of God's forgiven family, his forever family, and it's this. Being a Christian is never about what we do. Being a Christian is always about what Jesus has done. Okay, just help me. Okay, so it's not do, but done. Can we just say that together? It's not do, but done. In fact, let me put the do in the bin. Okay, that's gone in the bin. You see, when Jesus dies on the cross, let's get a cross here. When Jesus dies on the cross, he does everything to save us. Children and grown-ups, if we read our Bibles, if we look at our world, we know we are not the people that we should be. We don't love God like we should. We don't love other people like we should. That means we've got a problem we need rescuing from. But the brilliant news is that Jesus does everything that's necessary to rescue us. If we try to be good, it won't work. If we try harder, it won't work. But if we trust in Jesus, we're forgiven. It is all about what Jesus has done. It's not do. We put the do one in the bin. It's all about what Jesus has done. Children, that is great news. It means anyone who trusts in Jesus and what he's done on the cross is totally forgiven. I'm going to say two more big things, children, about that. Here's the first one. Sorry, it's big word alert, okay? Here's the big word. The big word is justified, okay? Now, justified means God looks at us as if we are totally sin-free, like we've never done anything wrong. It's as if we have never, ever done anything wrong, and it's all because of what Jesus has done. That's number one. Here's number two. And it changes everything about life here and now. You see, when Jesus dies on the cross, he promises to come back in the future. Let me put this up here. This is our sign for Jesus coming back in the future. He promises that he'll come back in the future, but he doesn't just leave us on our own. He actually comes and lives inside every Christian by the Holy Spirit. See that? We are saved from sin, and the Spirit lives within us all through the Bible before Jesus. That's exactly what was promised, that God would come to his people, live in them by his Spirit, so they would want to live his way and would have the power to live his way. Children, I've got something to help us here. I've got a nice white T-shirt to show us that, it lo- that when God looks at us, he sees us as sin-free. And it's got a couple of stickers on it, which I think some of the older children could probably read for me in a moment. It's always a difficult bit. Here we go. Okay, any of the older children with good eyesight, can you read those for me? What does this one say? Anyone read this one for me? Yeah. Brilliant, saved from sin and spirit within. So, as a Christian and anyone else who's trusting in Jesus, we trust in what Jesus has done. We are totally saved from sin. The spirit lives within us, which makes us want to live God's way while we wait for Jesus to come back. That all sounds great, doesn't it? And sounds really simple. Saved from sin, set free from sin, spirit within, waiting for Jesus. But children, you only got to chat to the grown-ups to tell you that life while we wait for Jesus just isn't that simple. Christians still have a battle with sin, and Christians still need every day to choose to live God's way. We need to make the right response, the right choice to the Spirit within us. Children, I know you listened really well earlier. In the first reading we had... We were told we should live by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. And in the passage we're looking at, we're going to see that we should sow to please the Spirit. They are four ways of telling us that each and every day Christians need to choose to live God's way, which brings us to our sowing principle. Our sowing principle is in verses 7 and 8, and here's what it is. You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. Let me say that again for us. You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. In fact, let's say it together. I'll say it once more, then we'll say it together. You reap what you sow, 
you get what you grow. Let's try it together. You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. Let me read the verses so we see it for ourselves. Here we are. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Now, children, Paul here is telling us there is a really simple idea that God has made in the whole of creation and how he works in the world, and it doesn't change. We see it at harvest. We see it if we help with the gardening at home or plant something at school. I'm just going to make sure we understand this idea that we reap what we sow and we get what we grow. Children, you're going to have to help me here. Children, you're going to have to kind of shout some things out for me in a moment. Uh, now, children, if I wanted to grow some cucumbers, think about this for a moment. Cucumbers, let's have some carrots. Let's have some lettuce. Let's have some leeks to keep the grown-ups happy. There we go. Now, children, help me here. If we reap what we sow, we get what we grow. If I want to grow some cucumbers, do I need carrot seed, lettuce seed, leek seed, or cucumber seed? What do we think? Which one? Alex, think carefully. Which one? Cucumber seed. Okay, we'll have some cucumber seed. Okay, uh, what if we want to grow carrot? I reckon leek seed. Do we agree, leek seed? You say no. What, what seed do I need? Someone help me. What seed? Carrot. Brody, great job. Let's have some carrot seed. Brilliant. Dropping it everywhere. Okay, it's getting... Now, I've got lettuce and leeks. If I want to grow leeks, which one am I going to go for? Lettuce or leeks? What do we think? What do we think? I want to, I want to grow lettuce. What am I going to go for? Which seed do you think? Lettuce. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you, Oscar. Great. Let's have some lettuce. Okay, final choice. Okay, now... You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. I think I need leek seed to grow leeks. Do we agree? Happy with that? Brilliant. Okay. Now, we know gardening isn't that simple. So uh, what else do we need? Here we go. A bit of water. We'll have a bit of water. Not too much. Okay, a bit of water. Um, we probably need something else. It's big, it's bright, it's orange, and it's normally in the sky. What do we need? The sun, okay, brilliant. Let's have a look. Oh, is it going to rise? Here we go, there's the sun. And then we have to do the thing that we never want to do. We have to wait. How long for cat? No, let's not do that. Okay, so if we reap what we sow, we get what we grow. Are we ready? What do we think? Uh, children, choose one of these for me. Someone just choose one for me. Yeah, which one? Cucumber. cucumber. What are you expecting the cucumber one? What do we think? What do we think? Cucumbers? We reap what we sow, we get what we grow? You're right. Okay, cucumbers. Confession time, it didn't fit in the bucket. Okay, there we go. Cucumbers. Okay, let's see if you can do this. We reap what we sow, we get what we grow. Carrots, what do you reckon? You sure? Brody, you go for this? You're right, look. Even homegrown, look at those ones. Excellent. Okay, now, lettuce, what do we reckon? If you reap what you sow, you get what you grow, what are we going to get now? You sure? Brilliant. Excellent. And uh, the vegetable that some of us probably don't want, but if we plant leek seed, what are we going to get? What do you think? Are we sure? Anyone going to convince me? Cucumbers. Carrots. Lettuce. You're right, leeks. Brilliant. Do you get the idea? We reap what we sow, we get what we grow. And that is through all of creation, and that is how God works in the world. Now, children, here's what we need to know. When it comes to the Spirit, when it comes to how God works in the world, it is the same. And we're going to think about that now. So let me do a speedy clear up. The band are excited, but I'm not ready for them yet. Okay, children, you're going to help me still. Let's have a look at verse 8. Here we go. Children, here's the first thing we see. There are two ways that we can live. Here's the first one. Let me read it for us. Whoever sows to please their flesh. Children, 
What does Paul say we could sow to please? Whoever sows to please their flesh. What, what is it that we could sow to please? Yeah, Alex. Our flesh. Okay, let's go bigger for this one. Okay, sowing to please our flesh. What on earth does that mean? Well, parents, if you've got your Bibles there, you could cheat a little bit. Five, uh, chapter 5 and verse 13, the footnote is your friend. And in the footnote, it will tell you that the flesh is all about our sinful nature. It's about us wanting to live our own way. It's about us saying yes to sin in our lives. Sowing to the flesh, children and grown-ups, is like saying that we trust in Jesus, but we don't care how we live. We trust in Jesus, but we still want to live our own way and still do all the things that God hates. That's what it means to sow to the flesh. It's as if I haven't trusted in Jesus. Okay, children, help me with the second option. It's there in verse 8. Here's the next one. Whoever sows to please the Spirit. Who else could we please? Whoever sows to please the Spirit. Someone help me here. What's that one? Yep. The Spirit. I need to look up here better. Okay. Sows to please the Spirit. Now, that means living our life the Spirit's way. Trying to love other people and live God's good way while we wait for Jesus. Do you see the choice? Now, children, remember the principle. You reap what you sow. You get what you grow. Let's have a look at the verse. If I choose to keep living for sin and saying yes to sin and never wanting to live God's way, what's going to happen? Let me read you the verse. What will I reap? Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Children, what is that that we're going to reap? What will we get if we just sow to please the flesh? Someone shout it out for me. Yeah. Destruction. Brilliant. Let's check. Let's have a look. Yes, if I spend all of my life just living for me and not trying to live for Jesus, live by the Spirit, live to please the Spirit, then in the end I will reap destruction. Let's look at the other one though. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap, here it comes children, eternal life. What is the thing that I will get if I seek to live for the Spirit? to please the Spirit. Let me read it again. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. What's the thing that we get? Yeah, just eternal life. Let's check. We reap what we sow. We get what we grow. You're right. It's eternal life. Now, children, possibly the easiest question of the day. Which of those is the good thing and which is the bad thing, do you think? I want thumbs up for the good thing and thumbs down for the bad thing. Are we ready? Eternal life. Thumbs up. Destruction. Thumbs down. Destruction means being separated from God and all that is good forever. Children, it's a pretty obvious choice, isn't it? Eternal life is so much better than destruction. If we want eternal life, we need to trust in Jesus and then so to please the Spirit. It sounds so straightforward. Well, in a moment, we're going to think about why that's not always an easy thing to do. But before we do that, we're going to sing now and rejoice in Jesus as the one who has done everything to save us. So let's stand and we'll sing together as the music begins. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you. Please do have a seat. <clears throat> okay, children, grown-ups, we've had our sowing principle. We reap what we sow, we get what we grow. And it's obvious, isn't it, the right thing to do is trust in Jesus and what he's done, and then as people who are saved from sin and have the Spirit within, we seek to sow to please the Spirit so we have eternal life when Jesus comes back. So if it's that obvious... Why does Paul have to tell Christians to do it? And if, that, if it's that simple, why do we have to be told to do it and warned what happens if we don't? Well, we see the sowing problem in verse 9. Let's look at it together. I've summed it up like this. Here's our sowing problem. It's hard to keep going at sowing. It's hard to keep going at sowing. Let me read you the verse. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Children, help me here. What does weary mean? What does someone just did a brilliant yawn as they put their hand in the air? Okay, what does weary mean? Someone tell me what, what does it mean to be weary? Show me, show me in your body what it looks like to be weary. What's weary like? I think, what does it mean, Alex? Tired. So like weary, tired, worn out, wanting to give up when we find something really hard. Children, tell me something you find hard. What do you find hard? Learning to ride a bike, that can be fun, but it can be hard. Reading, learning to read, that can be hard. Yep. Maths, Maths yeah. Learning to do our maths can be hard. And sometimes we're tempted to give up. It's worth it, but it can be really hard. We can get weary and tired, and we don't want to do it. Well, children, the real danger here for Christians is even though they're saved from sin, even though they have the Spirit within, they get tired of living the Spirit's way, and they want to give up. But Paul is saying we need to keep going if we want the harvest of eternal life. It is hard to keep going at sowing, but it's worth it. Well, why is it so hard? Well, children, let me go back to chapter 5 with you. Let me read you verse 17. And the problem is this. There is a real battle going on. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict. They are fighting each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Children, until Jesus comes back, there will be inside every Christian a real battle with sin. It's like there's a boxing match going on inside of them. 
Here's our boxing gloves. See if I can do this. Here we go. Here is the spirit saying yes to going Jesus' way. Here is the flesh that wants to go its own way. And it's like inside the Christian, there is this battle going on. Look at the verse again. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. It's like there is a fight going on inside every Christian to live the spirit's way. That's why we get tired and weary. That's why we find it hard and sometimes want to give up because there is a battle going on inside every one of us. There is a fight to keep going at sowing, even though it's worth it. And sometimes that can feel like a losing battle and we're tempted to give up. Children, as you get older, you might find that you try to live for Jesus, but you fail sometimes, just like the grown-ups do. But every day we just keep trusting Jesus and carrying on in the fight because we know that if we sow to please the Spirit, we will receive eternal life. Well, children, back in verse 9, I think there's another reason that it's hard to keep going. It's hard to keep going at sowing, and it's this. You have to wait. Children, be honest with me. Who likes waiting for things? Is anyone going to put their hand up and say they like waiting for things? You sure, Sophia? What do you like waiting for? Rides at our theme park. Okay, but do you actually enjoy the queue or do you enjoy the ride? You enjoy both. Okay, she enjoys both. Didn't know that was happening. Okay, normally we don't like waiting. I think that's true for most of us. I don't think we think that it's worth it sometimes. We don't like waiting. Okay, public confession time. In the last few years, my wife Yvonne has got into growing vegetables at home. Gorgettes, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots. She's gone for it. Beetroot, the works. I don't know if you've tried children at home, but she's gone for growing everything. And I sarcastically, when anyone says, how's Yvonne's garden going? The answer is, nothing a bit of turf wouldn't sort out. Just turf it over and mow it. Why is that? Because I hate waiting. And I think most of us hate waiting. But, public confession, it is worth the work and worth the waiting for homegrown veg. They are I've publicly admitted I think it's a good thing. But you see what's going on? We all hate waiting for anything. Anyone ever actually watch TV at the right time? No. TV on demand. If you need something, Amazon Prime. Get it now. Deliveroo for food. It's now, now, now. Everything around us says, have it now. But sowing to please the Spirit is about waiting, and that is so much harder. Saying no and waiting, saying yes to please the Spirit, is hard work. It's hard to keep going at sowing. So children, grown-ups, if you're weary, if you're tempted to give up, or in the future you find yourself wanting to give up, just remember, it's worth waiting. It's a battle, but it's worth it. It's a fight to do what's right, but it's worth it. Because we will reap a harvest at the proper time if we don't give up. Children, grown-ups, it's a fight to do what's right, but it's worth it. And what we're going to do now is we are going to sing and rejoice and ask for Jesus' help as we think about living the life we were made for, being free to live the Spirit's way. Let's stand and we'll sing together.
Please do be seated. Okay, children and grown-ups, so we've seen the sowing principle. You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. We've seen the problem, it's hard to keep going at sowing because there is a battle within and we get tired and we don't like waiting, but it's worth it. And everyone who has really trusted in Jesus will want to live to please the Spirit. Even though they find it hard to do, they will want to do that. But if you sit here as someone who is thinking, but I just don't want to, please don't hear us saying try harder to be good. The thing we need to do is go back and think about Jesus and all that he's done. Because it's only when we trust in what he's done that we will want to live the Spirit's way. But we still need to answer the question, what does it look like to live the Spirit's way? Well, the great news is we're not left guessing. Let's have a look at verse 10. Children, you're going to help me here. I want you to, re- to, when I read it, to see if Paul says some people or all people. And you can shout out afterwards. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Children, was it some people or all people? What was it? Some people or all people? All people, brilliant. It was all people. We are to do good to all people. Sowing in practice means doing good to all. Doing good to other Christians as the people closest to us, who we have the most in common with, but doing good to all to everyone, everywhere, whenever we can. The way we sow to please the Spirit, the way that we live Jesus' way, God's way, is all about how we treat other people. But still, what does that mean? What will it look like to treat other people the way that God wants us to? Well, the brilliant news is that we're not left guessing. It's not about me saying, I think it's like this, and you saying, I think it's like this. It's all about seeing what God himself says in the Bible. Now, we don't have time to look at all of chapters 5 and 6. If we did, there's lots of things we would see, and maybe that's a great thing to do at home as individuals or as families. But let me give you some headlines. 5.13. It's humbly serving others in love. It's putting other people first, just like Jesus did. Verse 14, it's loving our neighbour as much as we love ourselves. It's about other people. Verses 19 to 21, it's about saying no to sin, just like Jesus did. We'll never do it perfectly, but it's what we try to do. And let me read you again verses 22 to 23. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Children and grown-ups, just imagine what it would be like if in our church and in our families, and in our friendships, with everyone we knew that we lived like this. Let me read it for us. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what Jesus is like. That is what life is supposed to be like. That is how we are supposed to treat each other. And that's what the Spirit will help us to be like, as we sow to please the Spirit. Sowing to please the Spirit means doing good to everyone, doing good to all, loving others just like Jesus has loved us. We'll never do it perfectly before Jesus returns, but it's worth finding to do it, because when he comes, we will receive eternal life from him, we'll reap the harvest at the proper time. Children and grown-ups, The Christian life isn't easy, but it's simple. God the Father, Jesus his Son, works in us by his Spirit through his word to us, the Bible. And as we look at the Bible and understand the Bible, we learn how to live the Spirit's way. So children, grown-ups, why don't we commit today to be people who trust Jesus for eternal life and so to please the Spirit so we receive eternal life when he returns. Let me pray for us now for help to do that. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we reap what we sow. We get what we grow. So please help us all to trust in Christ and sow to please the Spirit. 
Heavenly Father, if we are weary in doing that, please help us not to give up. Please help us all to look forward to the eternal life you promise as we trust and live for Jesus. Please help every one of us to sow to please the Spirit. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to take the opportunity to sing again now as our final song. And as we sing this final song, we're just rejoicing that the way that God works is through Jesus by the Spirit in us. It's not all about what we do. It's Jesus working in us. So let's stand and we'll sing together.
Heavenly Father, please help every one of us to trust Christ this week and every one of us to sow to please the Spirit this week. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>